Good evening, everyone, and welcome. We are going to be talking about how to overcome autoimmune conditions by balancing your hormones. And this comes from an article by Dr. Jockers. If you have any questions, you can please feel free to give Dr. Justine a quick um, text, uh, 647-987-9355. I wanted to welcome our leader here from Justine Blaney Wellness Center, Dr. Justine. So she is a passionate motivational speaker, um, visits lots of schools, universities, um, businesses, charities, even local events. And I also wanted to invite um, and introduce Dr. Udani, who's our naturopathic doctor here at Justine Blaney Wellness Center. And she is very passionate in women's health, digestion, hormones, um, which is really great, and stress. So please help me welcome both Dr. Justine and Dr. Udani. Hello, everyone. And we've got great information for you. Whoever doesn't feel like they want to pull their hair out or feel like their hormones are out of whack or they, they're just a little moody that day. So, But coming up, because we always want you to learn one new thing a week is we're talking about, yeah, you got it, digestion, constipation. And that's coming up with Dr. Udani. Um, we do have a cooking class with our holistic nutritionist, and we're going to learn about degeneration and the glyphatic system. What's that, right? So stay tuned. That's coming up one new thing every single week. So today we're covering 12 ways to balance your hormones. So we're going to talk about six problems, and then we're going to talk about 12 solutions. Isn't that great? Because that's more solutions than problems, right? So we got 12 solutions coming your way. So hormones can be super, super important for your health. All of us need to balance as best we can our hormones. None of us are perfect, but a hormonal imbalance can be the root cause of autoimmune conditions, and it can wreak havoc with every part of your life. These microscopic messengers, these messengers of the endocrine system need to go all over, and they do a lot of really, really big jobs to help you be healthy. So when we talk about the importance of these health, uh, healthy hormones, they're coming from all different parts of your body. A lot of times people think hormones just you know, maybe from their thyroid, but they're not realizing they can come from the top part of your brain, your pineal gland, your hypothalamus, your pituitary, all top part in your head, your thyroid, your thymus, your pancreas, your adrenals. The adrenals sit on top of those kidneys. So there's many parts of your hormones that are vital, that are affecting your, your appetite or lack of or increase of your sex drive, your sleep, and they affect your energy, uh, your weight, and they do affect your mood. So too much, too little can throw us off balance. So today's the solutions and ways to manage uh, uh, hormones. And if the hormones are out of balance, that can cause autoimmune diseases. That can be the more serious side, but sometimes we can just have brain fog, feel low energy, or just like, um, you know, uh, hangry or moody, or we're just like our weights flushing all over, our, we're hot, we're cold. Um, these are all signs of hormone imbalance. And this is not just women, right? Like you can't just blame PMS or PCOS. It's not just that time of the month. Hormones are affecting all of us, men and women of all ages. So super important to get our uh, hormones in balance. M millions and millions of us do not um, have our hormones in balance and that's reflecting our energy. So today's information is going to come from a pretty cool book that Dr. Jockers took an excerpt from. The book is called Beat Autoimmune, um, The Six Keys to Reverse Your Condition and Reclaim Your Health. It is by uh, Palmer Coppola. You'll see that at the bottom of the screen, Palmer Coppola. And getting to the root causes. Now, we're covering an excerpt of this book. But this book talks about the acronym FIGHTS. The acronym FIGHTS, and which represents F for food, I for dealing with infections, G for dealing with gut health, H for hormone health, T for reducing toxins, and of course, S, reducing stress. And that's something that Dr. Udani and I are super passionate about. So great acronym, the acronym FIGHTS, coming from uh, this book with from Palmer. And we're going to talk about a section of it today on dealing with hormone balance. So when we deal with the six hormone imbalances, um, that can affect your insulin, your cortisol, 
Uh, when I was younger, I was definitely estrogen dominant. And I, I could tell you personally, I found it hard to manage and certainly could do it on my own. Um, did affect uh, menstrual cycle, did affect uh, skin, did affect energies. Um, looking at uh, vitamin D levels, again, tests don't guess. So get your vitamin D levels checked with your naturopath or with your medical doctor. And then what the heck is DHEA, right? What's that? So Dr. Uday is going to be teaching us today about that and the ways, um, what these six hormonal imbalances. Now, these are all going to sound like problems, but hang in there because we've got 12 solutions. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Justine. So let's jump right into one of the most common hormone imbalances that a lot of us are actually dealing with. So, you know, because of the, the way that we are living our lives, there um, a lot of us are becoming really, really a pre-diabetic or having really high blood sugar. That's like, uh, that's not getting under control. And a lot of that is because of the hormone insulin, which is uh, your body's just not responding well to. So I think of insulin like this um, hormone that, that uh, knocks on the door of the cell and it opens the, the, the door so that blood sugar, the sugar in the blood can go into the cell. But what can happen is when we eat too much sugar or when there's a lot of inflammation or when there's a lot of stress, the, the cell almost has headphones. So it's deaf to insulin knocking on the door. So more and more insulin needs to be produced that, but the, but the cell is more, is more and more deaf to, uh, to that signal. So what ends up happening is you get insulin resistance building up. So, uh, and when this happens, the blood sugar is, keeps rising. This, the, you, you feel more hungry, even though you have all this blood sh uh, sugar in your blood, it's just not getting into the cells. So you might notice that you tend to be, get really hungry all the time, or you might feel thirsty, you're craving sweets. And uh, one of the one of the really common signs of insulin resistance is you feeling really tired after a big meal. So that is like, you know, when you get that food coma, that could be an early sign of insulin resistance. And um, some uh, people even develop things like acne uh, on the skin, skin tags, high blood pressure and high um, cholesterol can also follow insulin resistance, high insulin. So this is where we really want to test instead of guessing, you know, we can order lab work to make sure uh, your insulin levels are healthy, your blood sugar is healthy. And um, that way we can really figure out how to um, deal with the high insulin. Number two is cortisol. So cortisol is your stress hormone. And you know, as humans, we are made to deal with stress and we can thrive in, in certain stressful situations. But what happens is, some, we're all dealing with stress too much these days, you know, so we tend to get stressed all the time. And that is when the cortisol starts to become dysregulated. So when you have too high cortisol or too little, you tend to feel tired, but wired. So a lot of my patients say, you know, they have trouble sleeping, they're tossing and turning, they're not getting that good seven to eight, nine hour sleep. Some people even develop anxiety. You can get heart palpitations. And also there's cravings. So sweet cravings can be increased when you have too high cortisol. And you might even notice that you might get a little bit of belly fat that just is so stubborn. So this is all because of you, your adrenals. Like Dr. Justine mentioned, they sit on top of your kidneys. They're producing too much cortisol and your body is just becoming um, resistant to that as well. And over time, what happens when you have too much stress is your adrenals get end up getting tired and they, they stop producing um, as much cortisol. So then you start to feel really burnt out, you know, and just like no motivation. You don't even want to get out of bed. So that's also something we don't want to deal with either. And number three is estrogen dominance. So like, like Dr. Justine mentioned, estrogen dominance can be kind of complicated. You know, there's a lot of symptoms. Um, a lot of it is um, with women, but men can also experience estrogen dominance too. So estrogen dominance is basically there's just more estrogen compared to progesterone or testosterone. So Think of progesterone like the, the, the yin and yang, you know, the, the estrogen is the yin, progesterone is the yang. So they balance each other out. But if there's too little progesterone, which can happen when you have too much cortisol, 
because cortisol likes to steal progesterone, especially when you're stressed. You can develop estrogen dominance. So this is when you get, you know, you can you can develop conditions like endometriosis, like that painful period, really heavy clots, lots of PMS, even depression, anxiety. Um, you can get a lot of weight gain in your hips and thighs, uh, and even can develop thyroid problems as well. So this is can all this can all be because of chronic stress, and of course. There's a lot of estrogen in our, in our environment these days in, in the form of different um, plastics and uh, in birth control, you know, synthetic hormones. So there is always uh, more estrogen compared to progesterone and testosterone in, in, in the environment. So our bodies is constantly facing with this. And if we have stress, we're not going to be able to detox estrogen properly too. So this is something that I, of course, help with my patients because there's a lot of patients that do deal with PMS symptoms and they think it's normal to have really heavy periods and really heavy, like where you're taking time off work at least. And that's not normal. You know, we want to balance the estrogen and there are ways to safely balance it as well. And, and then to add here, uh, Dr. Udani, if you go back, uh, Angela, this is this is really serious to manage. It's not something like, oh, I can tough it out. I'm second out. It's only a couple of days a month or, you know, it's not a big deal. It is a big deal because estrogen dominance is a huge part of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And it certainly affected my mom when she had breast cancer. There are estrogen dominant uh, causes to different types of breast cancer. Um, so, I mean, this does slowly progress to become very, very serious problem. And it does need to be addressed. And often um, our conventional medical system waits till the, the fire rather than getting all of the, you know, fire um, alarms in your home. Right. And and so with a, a Dr. Udani, the goal is is to make sure you're addressing the problem before you have a fire. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Justine, for mentioning that. That is so true because like, you know, your body's always sending signals when something's off and it's up to us to listen to it and get tested and figure out what's going on. Yes. And, and speaking of getting tested, the one of the other really common um, hormone imbalances is uh, having a low thyroid. So your thyroid gland is just at the base of your neck. And this is the, the gland that controls your metabolism. So controls how your, your weight is maintained, can control your energy levels. Um, it can even control um, how you feel. So like anxiety and depression can be part of the thyroid as well. And I actually used to have a low thyroid and I remember feeling so tired. Like the afternoon hits and I needed to always take a nap and I was so out of it. No, no focus, very sluggish and always cold. So that's another symptom of a low thyroid is you feeling cold all the time. So it's when everyone around you is wearing t-shirts, but you feel like wearing a, a sweater, you know? So that's not normal either. And another thing with the low thyroid is constipation it can be very common to experience constipation with the, with low thyroid. And so this is a leading cause of, of a leading cause, hormonal imbalance. And, you know, up to 90% of people dealing with the a low thyroid, they also might have an autoimmune condition called Hashimoto's. Now, a lot of the thing is, a lot of medical doctors don't really test for this. Whereas I usually test for the antibodies to make sure to figure out, is there something going on here? That way, like Dr. Justine mentioned, we catch it before it becomes a big problem, you know, because these signs are always there. And uh, so one of the things with the uh, low thyroid is, you know, you really want to look at food sensitivities and things like that, which we're going to we're going to talk about a little bit down the line. This one Number is so important, uh, Dr. Danny, because a lot of times people uh, will get muscle aches or uh, tingling in their hands and then go get carpal tunnel surgery. Uh, when it's actually a thyroid problem. So they're, they're looking at the end of the hose. If the hose, is, uh, you know, the water's not coming out of the hose, they're looking and shaking the end of the hose rather than looking, is it the hose kinked somewhere? Is there a problem upstream? And a lot of what we're talking about is that these, all these symptoms interact. And that's why it's so important for a chiropractor and a naturopath working together to check your nervous system and it controls everything here, 
but also you have to look at the hormonal system. There isn't one problem, one solution. Many times there's one problem that has many different reactions and it needs multiple um, health professionals working together to help you be your best. Absolutely. Thank you so much for saying that too, because sometimes I, I notice that, you know, some of the patients that have a thyroid problem uh, come in with, with the cholesterol medication too, or needing iron. And so like nobody has made that connection that low thyroid can cause high cholesterol, you know? So it's like, we really always want to get to the root cause of what's going on. And it's often is a uh, hormonal imbalance or, you know, something that we can really Fix, you know, fix with lifestyle changes and things like that. Okay, jumping on to number five is low vitamin D. So, you know, a lot of us don't get the sun that we should be getting. And it's because, you know, we, we tend to stay inside in the winter. We, we really get like, what, three, four months of summer. And a lot of times we don't really necessarily go out as much either. So our vitamin D levels tend to kind of go down. And uh, I, you know, I usually test vitamin D in patients, um, because, you know, it tends to be low and, um, you know, and sometimes, you know, the older you get, it can also go down. If you have a darker skin tone, it's harder for your, the sun to produce vitamin D. Um, and then there could also be genetic mutations in the, um, in the vitamin D uh, receptor. So it's always important to test and don't guess because we also don't want to overdo the vitamin D as well. So vitamin D isn't just for bone health, you know, it's not just for increasing your calcium so that you have stronger bones. It's also very important for your immune system. It's very good for protecting you against cancers and also great for brain health as well. So very important vitamin that we want to get tested. Number six is low DHEA. So what is DHEA? I like to think the DHEA like the, the grandmother of all hormones, you know? It is what kind of give birth to testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, cortisol. So this is the hormone that kind of is like the, the, the foundation. So when stress is high, your adrenals work over time to make cortisol, you know, and cortisol likes to steal. So it'll steal away from all the other hormones. So it's going to take a lot of that DHEA to produce itself. And when that happens, you're going to get imbalances in your estrogen, your testosterone, your progesterone. And so it can cause a lot of those, those symptoms that we just talked about. So when you have too much low DHEA, you can feel really tired. You can, you can have decreased stamina, just um, uh, even like just fatigue. And you can have low libido, lots of infections, thin skin dry skin and eyes, poor memory. So when if you're feeling these things, like don't guess, we can test for your DHEA levels. And a lot of uh, women, as we get older, we can get low DHEA um, because our adrenals aren't producing as much. So this is also where we want to really take a look, guess, uh, test, don't guess. That way we can figure out, okay, how are your DHEA levels doing? Um, because all of these hormones are part of one big family, right? So if one is low, it's going to affect the other one. And so we really want to make sure everything is optimal. And so let's jump into 12 ways to balance your hormones. So we're going to go a little, a lot of in depth with these, uh, but we want to, you know, go ahead and remove some of the sad foods, replace them with veggies. We want to reduce alcohol and caffeine, enjoy healthy fats. They're very important for hormones, uh, healing your gut. Avoiding toxicants, very important as well. Getting enough good sleep, moving your body and getting outside, even having time to pause daily and considering a ketogenic diet, intermittent fasting and optimizing vitamin D levels. So we're going to jump right into these. Great stuff, Dr. Udani. So starting off with number one, we're going into solutions. We talked about six problems and the fact that many times these problems were not tested properly. Um, and, or they only test one part. So give you high cholesterol, give you a high cholesterol medication, but never get back to that. It was a hormone imbalance, never get to the root cause. And that's why highly recommend, uh, getting testing done with a naturopath. It's just much more thorough. So when we talk about balancing your hormones, we got to look at our diet. And the good news is the list of 
anti-inflammatory foods is twice, three times the size of the foods that are bad for you, all right? So there's a lot of good stuff, grass-fed meat. Lemon and limes or berries in your water, simple, easy one to and tastes great to have that in your water, especially as summer's coming up. Freeze some berries, put them in your water, through, uh, put lemon or uh, lime in your water. Adding those healthy fats, green tea before bed, try for organic, um, starchy vegetables, turmeric. I was just at Healthy Planet the other day, yummy. This is what it was. It was turmeric with hot water, little bit of oat uh, milk, little bit of maple syrup and cinnamon. So it was like a warm tea that just warmed your tube all the way down to your stomach, just an ounce or so, absolutely delicious. And it is an anti-inflammatory. So amazing. Those wild caught fish instead of uh, farmed. Looking at bone broth, uh, my husband, amazing. He makes his own. Um, adding apple cider vinegar, ginger to your teas, amazing. Ginger to your food. Getting those healthy fats for your oils, fermented vegetables. That's probably one I'm weak at, to be honest. Um, coconut oil, coconut butter. Um, so adding oregano, this is, you know, spring's coming, grow your own. Um, one of the areas of, of making your own um, and growing your own rosemary, growing your own um, oregano. There's a lot of these spices that are easy to just grow on your uh, balcony as it's coming up or put it in your front window and they last all year. So some of these areas, adding onions, chives are things that we can add in as we're trying to avoid that processed, fried uh conventional in a package in a box in a plastic uh type of uh foods that actually make your hormones worse there's so many phytoestrogens and so it's so much easier to add uh the good stuff so that the bad stuff falls off your plate so number one we're looking into a healthier diet instead of the standard american diet number two is we want to reduce uh caffeine and alcohol are the top foods as you look at that thumbs down, right? Thumbs down. Um, soy is one of the ones that uh, people get upset about, especially if they're vegetarian. There's so much uh, tofu that is bad for you. All right. There's so much like uh, beyond burgers. There's so much about like, it's, oh, it's vegetarian. So it's healthier, or even it's gluten-free or it's because it's healthier. It's not true. We still need to read those labels. And a lot of soy products are uh, create phytoestrogens and actually create hormone imbalance. Alcohol, um, this is not no alcohol, all right? Um, a, a glass of wine every other day is not the problem. The problem is a bottle of wine on Saturday, okay? So we want to look typically towards white alcohol. That can be a lot better. So um, if, you know, like vodka would be, uh, gin would be better than trying to have like a rum and coke, right? Because now you're you're mixing uh, the, the Coke, which is adding the bad sugars and all the bad uh, high fructose corn syrup with your alcohol. Mm. Coffee, yes, one coffee a day is not going to kill you. The problem is most people aren't doing organic coffee. We're hitting Tim's, right? And it's addictive. And then we're, it's really hard to get off because you get the headaches, you get the withdrawal. So again, if you are um, loving these areas, this is where you want to coach along the way so that it gets easier. You don't have the side effects, the withdrawal um, side effects um, as you try to reduce these products. And then look to, well, how do I add? Like, what do I add instead? Just like that turmeric uh, shot that I was telling you about, you, like automatically I felt like revved up again, you know, it, it boosted me and boosted my energy. So what do you do instead to be better? And that's where we need some help. Number three is enjoying healthy fats. Butter is okay. Margarine is plastic. So throw that margarine out. Doesn't matter if it says it's good for your heart. That just is great marketing. All right, ghee. I can be honest. I'm not really good. I don't know how to cook with that. I'm not a great cook anyway. Um, my husband's the best. So I'm learning and looking up different recipes, asking for help with different recipes to add coconut milk and coconut oil and avocado oil. How do you do it? Where do you use it? Can you cook with it? These are areas um, that you want to help ask for help and start to do um, great research now. That's amazing because there's so many wonderful recipes online. I grew up that eggs, you could only have two eggs a week or is bad for your cholesterol. 
right? In fact, I think it was 19 when I was trying out for the Olympics and they said I had high cholesterol. So told me I couldn't have uh, shrimp and couldn't have eggs. That's literally the advice I got. And then it found out that they had the wrong blood work. It was a month. They had it all messed up. I redid my blood work. But the new research is completely different. You do not have to limit to two eggs a week. Um, you want to determine what is right for you. And you can absolutely have more eggs than that or add egg weights. That's getting a lot easier uh, with being able to, even at Costco, being able to get egg whites at a lower cost. So some of these bad fats, they're everywhere. So when you think, oh, I'm just getting a muffin at Tim's, or I'm just getting a little treat at Starbucks, or I'm buying that uh, those croissants at uh, Costco, right? A lot of this is made with cheap, bad fats. A lot of the salad dressings, you can say, oh, it looks good. It looks like oil and vinegar. Yeah, but then it has sunflower oil or corn oil in it, um, safflower oil, because they want it cheap, okay? So definitely the goal is to start to every week, try to read one new thing that comes in your home, read the read the labels. The more, if every week you read one thing new, at the end of the year, you've read 52 new things, they are like, crap, I shouldn't be having that. What do I replace it with? So one new thing every single day, uh, sorry, every single week to start to make one swap uh, a week will make a big difference. As we get into number four, Dr. Udani. Yes, thank you, Dr. Justine. So everything that Dr. Justine mentioned from one to three is going to affect your gut, you know, so like the good quality fats you're eating, reducing your alcohol and caffeine, and also having those great grass fed beef, the, the herbs and spices, they really help your good gut, gut bacteria grow. They help heal your gut lining because we need a good gut, good gut health to balance our hormones because, you know, our gut is considered our second brain. It's also where most of our immune system is there too. So if the gut is not uh, functioning well, um, it's going to really ramp up that inflammation and it's going to uh, increase the stress in your body. Also, I want to mention that, you know, alcohol, for example, can really kill the good gut bacteria. So I had a patient come in who was drinking pretty regularly and they had no idea that they were doing this, but they were experiencing so much bloating and so many loose stools. So uh, we just have came up with a plan to uh, manage their alcohol consumption and also heal the gut lining and they were getting better. So just like when we see these, make these connections, you really start to realize, okay, how everything is connected. So gut healing your gut is something that I'm so passionate about. And we'd love to do this because it, it really is connected to so many parts of other parts of your health. Number five is avoiding the toxins. So I know we're all surrounded by lots of different things these days, you know, the and you know our detergents the fragrances the perfumes the the con food containers um so sometimes it is you know it's almost impossible these days to completely cut out toxicants and and these toxins can really affect your estrogen but what we can do is the more we know, like Dr. Justine mentioned, the more we read the labels, the more we really make conscious decisions, we can make a change. So for example, I used to um, carry my lunch in a plastic container all the time and I would put it in the microwave, but that's not good because that heat makes the plastic uh, leach the, these toxins into your food. So now I carry a glass container or I have a stainless steel water bottle or a glass water bottle. And so even things like that is really, really helpful. My brother, I remember when he was growing up, he used to get this allergic reaction and we had no idea what was going on. He was getting hives everywhere. We did so many allergy tests and turns out it was the detergent. So we had to change it to a healthier detergent. And, you know, so sometimes these things can be very obvious, like having an allergic reaction. Other times it's like you just feel tired, you feel fatigued, you gain, you're gaining weight and not sure what's going on. And it could be that you're having too high of these toxins. And, you know, pesticides, for example, if you heard of glyphosate, it's kind of, it's called Roundup. It's a very common pesticide that's found in so many foods. So going for that organic produce whenever you can is such a great idea. 
Same with uh, even bleached feminine hygiene products, so pads and tampons, right? So making sure that there's so many healthier options out there now, like the Diva Cup or, um, you know, even those period underwear, because, you know, you are putting something, you know, kind of very close to a hormonally sensitive area. So we want to make sure that's also, um, you know, you, we keep an eye, uh, we, we are mindful of these things. So because one small habit a week can really change, uh, change up uh, your whole life by the end of the year. Uh, the number six is getting enough good sleep. So this can be difficult for a lot of us, especially when we're going through a lot of stressful, uh, a stressful period, you know, but there are tips that we can do. I think the biggest thing is you want to stop the coffee at least six hours before you go to bed because coffee can stay in your system up to six hours. So you might feel really wide awake and, you know, not be able to fall asleep. You can have your room really kind of cool because the cold temperature helps you feel more relaxed and go to bed faster. Uh, keep it as dark as possible. I remember getting black uh, blackout curtains really helped me uh, get that good seven to nine hour sleep. Um, using a sleep mask, sometimes that a weighted sleep mask over your eyes can be really nice because it kind of gives you a bit of that, uh, it makes you feel more tired. Uh, I have a, a weighted blanket and it feels like a hug. So it feels, you, you feel really like, like a bundled up and it's really nice. So that's another thing you can also add as well. Um, and also try not to eat uh, three, two to three hours within the, your sleeping. Because when you eat, you're getting that insulin up and then you, your body's like, I have all this energy. I need to use it up. So you feel more awake. So you also want to calm that system down too. And getting enough sun. So during the day, when you have enough sun, you're increasing your vitamin D, but you're also increasing your melatonin at the end of the day. And melatonin is important for helping you to feel sleepier and fall asleep. And making sure you do some exercises regularly, you know, this helps as well to make your body feel a little bit more tired and can get you into falling asleep as well. And you really want to avoid bright light, you know, um, just after sunset. I tell my patients to have a red light lamp because that can help um, you feel like there's sunset and get your brain into that um, uh, sleeping mode. And you can get these red light lamps on Amazon. It's really also great for your skin as well. You just have it like, you know, lit up in your bedroom and that can help you feel more tired. And you really want to start a nice bedtime routine where you wind down maybe around nine o'clock. And now actually there's more research showing that women, we do need more sleep than men. So we, so yeah, we need about seven to nine hours of sleep, um, which is like the optimal for us to work better and for our hormones. So, you know, trying to get that sleep as much as possible. Of course, I know we, everybody's busy, um, but uh, that, so some of these tips can go a long way. All right. Great hints. And we've had numerous talks on sleep on your pillows, on your bed, on your temperature. So we do have talks online to go back to. Um, we want to balance our hormones, get our bodies moving. That's going to help. Uh, I think everybody knows about our mood, our energy, but it also helps with lymphatic drainage. And that means getting the toxins out. If the toxins build up, that's going to create some of this hormone damage. So it's basically like how... Um, you know, getting the junk out of your body, sweating it out, getting lymphatic movement is super important for our overall energy, hormones, and mental clarity. We want to make sure we get time outside. Now, this is uh, this is tough in the winter for many people, getting that time outside. It's getting easier as we hit spring, we hit summer, getting that time outside, um, whether it's biking, hiking, walking, even sitting outside in the sun, just getting that melatonin is going to be super, super important. Um, we do talk about uh, walking outside, walking barefoot. If you can get on healthier grass, it's not full of uh, pesticides or sand or the beach, but grounding um, or often called earthing is getting our body walking outside. So, Angela, you want to switch to slide number eight. That's getting our time outside for balancing our hormones. And we know this when we see the beauty um, and, and it helps to just calm us and that'll help overall with our hormones and to ease, get that better sleep. Number nine is um, getting some time 
to pause, right? And I got to tell you, Dr. Are you dang go over, but this one's hard for me, all right? <laughs> like I really struggle with uh, quiet time. Um, and so I, it has to be scheduled or for me, it has to be part of a routine um, mm -hmm. and have a, I have a chair right over there, like a favorite chair where my feet can hit the ground because I'm short. Okay. <laughs> Most chairs, my feet stick straight out. So finding whatever your favorite place is mm -hmm. um, to pause. Yes. I think Dr. Justine, you, you nailed it. Cause it's like, it really can be whatever you want, whatever is like your pocket of peace or your safe space where you just feel like you can really like relax and let your guard down and just really lower that cortisol. And for a lot of us, it could be going outside, right? Going for that walk where we just kind of reconnect with nature. Um, it could even be prayer. So, you know, where we just uh, reconnect with our spirituality and, and uh, connection to God or the universe. Meditation is really amazing too. Uh, sometimes though, you just need to dance, you just need to get that energy out of you. This could also be a quick workout as well. I love listening to soothing music whenever, even when I'm cleaning, I put some soothing music on and I just get into this zone where I'm just like, okay, I'm cleaning. That's it. I don't have to think about anything else. <laughs> and sometimes it's also, you can do like a Epsom salt bath with a few essential oil uh, drops to help soothe the muscles. So this is really about prioritizing that pause, you know, every day where you find a moment where you can just have uh, a little bit of time for yourself. Because a lot of us these days, we're, we're giving, you know, we're, our cup is empty because we're giving to so many things, so many people, and we need to put pour into ourselves too. And this is one of the ways that we can really prioritize that is pausing daily and focusing on how can we give to ourselves. Going to number 10 is the ketogenic diet, which is Dr. Justine's favorite diet. Yeah. So coming up um, on that pause, I mean, I have been that busy mom where you're like, I have no time for anything. Like I'm just survival mode when you have kids that you're driving everywhere. So sometimes that pause time is just the five minutes with a coffee in the morning, or sometimes it's literally you've you're dropping the kids off or you're picking them up from school and you just sit, close your eyes for a few minutes in your car. Yeah. You know, like it, we may need to uh, be a little bit when we have those busy, crazy periods in our life, it might be a multitasking period, right? It might be just that two or three minutes um, but when you're driving home and before you enter your door and get into your house, you just take two minutes in your car, just slow breathing, mm -hmm. just to calm our bodies. Get, kind of get rid of the negative day so that we're coming in and being our very best to, for our family when we get in our home. Mm -hmm. Now, ketogenic diet, doing it 24-7 um, forever isn't healthy either, all right? So this is why it call, talks about uh, cyclical, meaning that it's you have to have on and off. And the goal is, yes, to be able to get to states, especially during different times of your life, if you are having hormone challenges or other health challenges with your heart, with your cholesterol, to reduce sugar significantly, try to get your body using ketones, but you don't want to be doing ketones all the time. And so that means you got to take time off, whether it's a weekend off or a month off, um, and then you get back to it. So there's, there's times of fasting, and, and then there's times of feasting. Feasting meaning like, okay, like you're going to take a weekend off. That doesn't mean you're going to McDonald's. doesn't mean you're like having a, a binge of tons of alcohol, but you're having a weekend off. You're eating, uh, you might be having bread, for example. You might be having, increasing your fiber in other ways. You might be, it's your birthday and you're having dessert, right? You're out for company, but then you get back on track. When we're feasting, we're creating more growth and building. And you see this in weightlifters. There's times when the, the weightlifters and people who train for figure, they eat more, they, they build up all these calories, and then they got to fast to lower their weight. So this cyclic motion can be very healthy, but it also needs to be monitored because it can get um, where you're feasting too often and you're, you're not getting back on track. So sometimes we need a coach to kind of re-guide us to get back to our true goals. Number 11 is intermittent fasting. And there's so many different ways I do try to practice intermittent fasting. The key is here, though, if it stresses you out, mm -hmm. you're actually going to increase those bad hormones and the cortisol. So, for example, um, I know personally I cannot do a warrior fast 
to fast for 19 to 21 hours a day, meaning eating for three hours a day. It would freak me out. I cannot do that. I feel like I'm deprived all day and I'm like, all I can think about is what I can eat next. Mm -hmm. right? My sister actually can manage just not eating for a day. No problem. So, it, and it doesn't stress her. She just doesn't think about it. She's also about a hundred pounds. So everybody is different. The simple fast is something most people can do, which is 12 hours. For example, you're not, you're eating between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. or 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Getting your dinner earlier in the day, like we talked about, so you have more time of not eating. That's when you can have clear broths, bone broths, um, teas before bed, but you're trying to eat your dinner closer to 5.30, uh, 6 o'clock. So that's shortening your window. So that's one that I think is for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, brunch fast is like you're now you're increasing the hours you can mix and match these so often simple fast is sort of the, the my go-to but also looking at adding a one day a week so for me my busiest day of the week is wednesdays typically work 15 or 16 hours on wednesdays and honestly eating takes time so this is a day that i eat very little like maybe some egg whites a couple eggs and tea all day so I don't have to worry about one prep time. I don't have to worry about eating time. I just, I'm working and I'm sleeping and I'm working out. Now there is that fear that when you're fasting, you can't work out. And that's just a lie. Unless you are like an Olympic athlete, ultra marathon, or, you know, and a half marathon. Um, there are, there are reasons when you cannot fast, but the majority of us, uh, we have enough sugar in our body. We have enough glucose in, in our body. We can last a day right? We can last a day without food as long as we're uh, staying hydrated. And that's the key is when you're doing this, you want to do hydrated. And if you're confused, please talk to a naturopath, a holistic nutritionist, your chiropractor, because at the beginning, you could have side effects, right? You could, it can affect your um, bowels where you get constipation. It can affect your focus. It can affect headaches. Mm -hmm. It isn't something you jump in and go hard out, mm -hmm. just like exercising. We wouldn't recommend that you run a marathon. You start with a walk, just go to a five minute jog. You go to a 5k, 10k, half marathon, marathon. We don't jump in so hard that we're going to crush our hormones and increase that cortisol response. Totally agree with you, Dr. Justine. You know, when when we're doing any any kind of diet changes or intermittent fasting, we really gotta see like how is your baseline stress doing? And this is where you know it's really important to have a coach because sometimes uh, you know, I've had patients who's who've done who've gone starved themselves and they're like, why is my weight not shifting? You know, and they feel even more stressed. They actually gain more weight because of that too. So when it comes to hormonal imbalances, it's really important to know where you're at and how your body's feeling because that's that's the that's the foundation that we got to go from jumping to the last point is optimizing your vitamin d level so you know we really want to get your vitamin d levels tested to see where you are at and then figure out if we need to supplement um or you know if you need to be more out, outside more so basically when you're when you're trying to get vitamin d from the sun which is the best way to get it because your skin is the most efficient way that your body produces vitamin D. Like you can get it from supplements, of course. Uh, but you know, sometimes our digestive system, if it's not doing well, it's not going to be absorbing well, right? So you want to try and get at least well, it's 15 to 45 minutes of good quality sun. So this is like direct sun, at least two to four times a week, you know, in a large part of your body. So uh, you know, like making sure, you know, your arms are exposed, your face, your legs, so that way we're getting lots of sun into the, into our skin. The lighter your skin is, maybe you might not need as much. So Dr. Justine might not need as much as me because she's going to be producing a lot more vitamin D in a shorter amount of time. So uh, sometimes, so for me, I might need to spend at least an hour, you know, three to four days a week in the sun to get the, the right amount of vitamin D. So uh, and during colder months, you know, it is a smart idea to take some vitamin D in either form of drops or a supplement. I prefer the drops because it is a little bit 
easier uh, absorbed into you and even for your kids as well you know especially if your kids are getting um feeling more tired in the winter months there is a risk uh, there is a link with low vitamin d and anxiety and depression you know so there's a lot of connections with low vitamin d and other um other issues you know uh, health concerns so get tested that way we can see how you're doing and then we can either supplement or do this with lifestyle changes as well i love vitamin d it's a great amazing vitamin it's actually considered a hormone to be honest because this is how it acts in the body it just acts on so many different levels so really now we talked about the six imbalances but also the 12 different ways that we can balance our hormones in a healthy way. And really the key to balancing is to live in harmony with nature, how nature made us, and uh, just to live in that in that peace and in that harmony and to stop harming us ourselves with unnatural things, you know, like sugar and stress. These tend to be the biggest ones, you know, that can really uh, throw us off our hormones. But there are ways that we can come back to ourselves where we can balance out uh, our hormones in a healthy and long lasting way. And a lot of times hormone imbalances tend to be the root cause of autoimmune conditions, um, digestive conditions and things like that as well. So the key is we're going to eliminate uh, or remove the obstacles as much as possible. So that way we can live in harmony with the way nature intended us to be. Hey, thank you so much, Dr. Udani. And we do sell pure, healthy vitamin D drops at the office. And we do sell for kids vitamin D gummies, also zinc gummies, uh, vitamin C gummies at, at a high quality without the junk in it. Um, why do we sell it? Because that's what our family uses. All right. We're not a healthy planet. We don't have a ton in our office, but we just have to try and have the, the top quality ones that uh, most people need. So what does this nervous system have to do with hormones? Guess what? If your nervous system is out of whack, you have those areas of subluxation pressure on your spine. It increases stress, increases stress, increases hormone imbalance. So the goal of the chiropractor is reducing stress on your spine, reducing stress on your spine nervous system and the messages from your brain and all those different organs we talked about, the adrenals, the pituitary gland, the hypothalamus. So as we reduce stress, our body is able to adapt to the environment better. And chiropractors, our goal is to help find these areas of subluxation and you may or may not feel them. Doesn't mean you have to have pain. Just like you may not feel that you're low vitamin D. You don't know. I was low vitamin zinc. I had I didn't know until I got tested with uh, Dr. Udani. I was taking zinc, but not enough. And so if you don't test, you don't know. Same with your spine and nervous system. If you don't test it, you don't get it checked regularly. You have no idea if it's functioning at its best. So we do recommend that everybody has regular checkups for the spine and nervous system and regular checkups with the naturopath. And Dr. Udani is my naturopath and the, definitely the doctor I trust the most. All right, upcoming, we have so many upcoming well, uh, webinars. Stay tuned with us. One new thing a week. We love helping you. And if you have new topics you're interested in, please let us know. We look forward to seeing you every single week. Um, these are things you can watch while you clean your house, while you do your laundry, fold your laundry, while you're making dinner. This is an opportunity to multitask and continually to learn more. Because that daily one thing, right, constant and never-ending improvement, that's all we can do. If we learn 50 new things a year, imagine how that compounds and what we can be. So connect with us. Please do a review. That helps us help others. Share this information with others. This is our volunteer time. We love, we care about you, we want to help. So we look forward to being with you soon. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. And we hope you learned a lot of things and have an amazing evening.